Hey guys, Kingpin here. Welcome to the next episode of Franchise Mode. It looks like we started with some good news. We completed the community challenge and in the top 75% of players too. I didn't get to play a whole lot since I've been busy with exams and schoolwork, but 75% is pretty good. An aardvark is a cool award. I'm pretty sure you get a randomized animal depending on how good you did, so an aardvark means we didn't do the greatest and we'll have to do a little bit better next time, but we'll still definitely make good use of it. I don't know if it'll be in this zoo or the next one we make, but an aardvark is more of an indoor animal where it needs a smaller exhibit. We don't have any indoor exhibits yet besides our lemurs. I was thinking about making a reptile house or some sort of indoor exhibit very soon, so maybe we'll have use for that aardvark after all. In case you missed the last episode, it was more of a tutorial on how to make an exhibit completely from scratch. And it looks like it worked out, because our guests think our zoo is underpriced, so we can raise it up and get even more profit now. Our zoo is really close to getting to 5 star rating. It looks like the only thing we're doing extremely poorly in is our marketing. I think you can find marketing right here, yeah. So far we've just been doing this smaller print campaign, but I think we can afford something a little bit more expensive now. Let's give it a shot. If we start tanking money and this doesn't really help, we'll cancel it. Our marketing's only two stars right now, so it definitely has room to improve. In this zoo, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I set it to animals age 1.5 times slower. That way, since I'm still new to the game, things don't get out of hand too quickly and our animals won't breed. Sadly though, death still happens. Rest in peace, Jose. Our first albino, and you'll definitely be missed. Luckily, with all of our animals aging, a lot of the animals that take longer to mature, like our spectacled caimans, are going to be ready to be released to the wild soon, which means we'll have an increase in conservation credits coming to the zoo extremely soon. That means we can get even better animals. If you guys enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We're actually getting really close to 500 subscribers, and I've only been on YouTube for three months. I couldn't have asked for better progress. But what I can ask for is our grizzly bears. Where are they? Here's one. But there are two in here. Hopefully they have cubs soon, because this is a pretty big exhibit for two grizzly bears. It looks like their welfare is doing really well. This exhibit's pretty much perfect for them as soon as we get their food leveled up through research. Here's the second one. I still can't believe this game is on console. Look how good the shading and the lighting looks. Hey, our vets are done. This is what we've been waiting for. They've been researching our African elephant, and they're almost done. Hopefully we can get some really cool new enrichment items for them. Because so far they have just kind of basic items that other animals like, and nothing really unique to them. That's not good. It looks like since our caimans have grown up, there's more alphas, or at least animals trying to bide for alpha. Caimans are one of those animals where there can only be one male that like to dominate over a group of females. So this one, having just grown up, now it's challenging the throne. We should probably box him, or release him to the wild at least. Get some conservation credits and save its life. It looks like our elephants are doing well. I'll probably cut a majority of it out of the video, but I checked on every single animal in the zoo, and they're all doing well. There wasn't really much interesting to show, except when I was checking on the elephants, I noticed both of our females are expecting offspring. It's not going to happen for a while, but we're going to have two elephant calves before long. They just spend a long time being pregnant. And it looks like our albino cappies have grown up and had kids too, and more albinos at that. I'm guessing albinoism is a trait you can pass down in this game. I don't know if that works like that in real life. I always thought it was more of a mutation that you couldn't breed. Before long, we're going to have an army of albino cappies, though. They breed like crazy. We probably have around 30 of them in this exhibit at this point. We're going to have to make a new taper exhibit, because look at all the cappies. The tapers don't really like being social. They're probably overwhelmed. If this lily pad would move, we can check on them. Let's just find another one. Right here. Eh, they seem fine right now, but they definitely could be a little bit better. So the plan for today is going to be to completely overhaul and expand this section of the North American Pavilion in the zoo. In order to do that, we're going to make it a circle, and we already have the path mapped out. We're going to worry about connecting it later, because I am not in the mood to deal with paths right now. But today we're going to be making a Timberwolf exhibit across from our grizzly bears. I'm not exactly sure where we're going to be putting this right now. The first thing we should do is probably expand the area so we have a little bit more options. I want to kick this mountain out a little bit more, just so we can put the wolves in a bigger exhibit, since I know they need a lot of space. 
My rough idea for the wolf enclosure is going to be a cave, just like the grizzly bears, where we can see them through one-way glass resting, but then it's going to have an elevated section to where guests can look down on them. They like to live in the forest, so there's going to be a lot of foliage, so having a good view of them is going to be crucial. In case you missed the last few episodes, we're trying to tackle North America semi-realistically. You're going to start in the mountains, with the mountain lions and grizzly bears, and then transition into the more forest and wetland area with our other animals. For now it's going to be timber wolves, and then behind them maybe moose or something else, like a beaver. I'm not sure yet, but today's definitely going to be timber wolves. And I'm thinking we make the exhibit right here. I'm going to end up connecting the cave with the grizzly bears rocks that are already in place. So to get an idea for it, I'm just going to copy and paste them. I'm not sure if I'm going to place any of these yet, since it'll make the path really narrow. But I'm sort of liking how this will look. Just imagine there would be glass in these rocks instead of rocks the entire way through. Obviously the structure would still remain the same, but you'd be able to see through these things. Let's try this one with not as much of an intense curve. Yeah, I think this works out well. So just pretend that there would be glass kind of in a U shape along the bottom of these. I'm thinking now we actually put the glass in though so we can start mapping the habitat. We'll go right here. Not right along the path, but we'll give it some room. This is where the wolves are going to be sleeping, so we don't want a bunch of kids slamming on it and waking them up and making them angry. Because wolves and angry kids probably don't mix the best. Luckily there's do not disturb signs, and I'm pretty sure the guests actually abide by these. There's also do not feed signs, so if you have those around and you have an exhibit with a low ceiling, the guest can't throw food in there. But now let's get this two-way glass down. One-way glass, excuse me. I'm thinking that's going to work. We don't want this area of the exhibit to be too big since most of their exhibit's not going to be the den where they sleep. It's just going to be a small portion of it. But if you try to envision the exhibit like I am right now, before we raise this glass of course, just kick the grizzly bear's rock structure over a little bit and go right over the top. We're basically going to expand that into a complete cave. What award did we just get? Oh sweet, we got a 5 star inspection. That's pretty cool. Usually our education and our conservation ratings go downhill, but our exhibits are good. This is going to be a semi-complicated build, but to start we're just going to steal pieces of rock from our grizzly bear exhibit, which we originally stole from our cougar exhibit. That way, every exhibit on this little mountaintop is going to match completely. We haven't made a complete walkthrough cave before in this zoo. Our grizzly bears have a small den, but it's only outside looking in. This is going to have an overhang so the guests can be dry in case it rains. It'll be a nice relaxing area where you can just look at the wolves. I'm considering redoing the grizzly bears exhibit on the left side if you were to look at the wolves on the right. That way, you'd be having two views. But the problem is the grizzly bears already have a den, so what I would end up doing is kind of hollowing out the rocks and just adding in some mesh to give a second viewing area. It wouldn't be the best view. This is the wolves exhibit, not the bears. But two viewpoints are better than one. The best way to make a cave is to first envision the shape you want it to be. Then, use large rocks. Usually the larger rocks are the first couple in the group. For example, these are the temperate rocks, and I'm using temperate rock 1. Temperate rocks lower on the count, like 20, are more flat, and they get progressively different shapes as you go along. But you can see we've mapped out where we want our two entrances to the den to be. After you've figured that out, then build the roof. It's not like it'll come collapsing if it's not connected to anything. So take flat rocks, and then duplicate them, making a roof. After that, you can connect the roof to where the rocks are located that'll be your pillars. You can take small rocks, for in this case we're using rock 3, and make a little arch. This way, your doorways are going to be mapped out for your cave. After that, all you have to do is blend it in. Whenever you're working with plant life in this game, I always say to have random rotation on. With rocks, it's 50-50. For example, right now we're making the roof, and we want this to be pretty uniform so rain and snow doesn't seep in, so we don't want random rotation on now. 
but typically I do like to have it on when I'm working with rocks. If you saw when we made those arches, random rotation kind of helps get the shape down, and when you're trying to blend it in, you don't want it to look like you just placed this. You want it to look like a natural formation. That way it'll trick the animals into feeling like they're right at home. Also, don't be afraid to use different kinds of rocks. We used taiga rocks for the roof of this thing, but temperate rocks for the base. That way it looks like two different rock types, and not just one gray blob. Color is important in this game. Just like with plant life, I always say that there's more than green in the forest, just like there's more colors of rocks than just a single shade of gray. Now we've got our roof done, but we want guests to be able to walk through and feel like they're in a cave system, so we're going to duplicate some of the roof and then smash it into the grizzly bear's rocks, since they're both a relatively similar height. I think this turned out really nice. Hopefully the guests like it and it's bright enough in there for them. But I think you guys are going to start to be able to envision this exhibit sort of how I am now. The next step, if you recall from our previous videos, is we're going to have to get our barrier in. We're going to use the null barrier again, since I really like designing custom ones. We already have one for this video, I made it off screen. It's going to look really nice. We're going to be using this custom barrier. It's made of mesh and wood. It'll break up the rock texture for the wolves, even though we're going to have more rocks in this exhibit later on. It'll be a nice break of the pace. Don't forget to line it up as perfect as you can. It doesn't have to be exact, but the closest you can get the better. Just use duplicate in the advanced movement menu. It makes things really easy. Always try to have between 15 and 0 degree rotation. 15 degree for your big movements, and 0 degrees if you have to make something perfect. This is going to be our main outdoor viewing area, but it's not going to be the only one. We should probably finish the null barrier first, just so we have an idea of where this exhibit's going to go. Over here it's going to be more of a rocky barrier, and then back this way is going to be the elevated portion. On the other side of this, so the right of where we currently are, I'm going to make an exhibit for an animal you'd be looking down on. Probably a moose, but I'm not positive yet. Moose are pretty big and they're going to need a giant amount of space, and they're more wetland creatures. We'll have to think about that later, but for now let's finish up this exhibit. We have our staff path here, which we're probably going to end up replacing with a real path later, but for now we just need to get our wolves into the exhibit. I'll catch up with you guys once this fence is finished. I'm a big fan of how that turned out. It's the most simple fence you possibly could have made. Just rocks and some mesh from the construction tab. 
But now we're going to do something a little bit more complicated. If you use these pre-built terrain modifications, like the square or the cylinder, over a null barrier, it actually gives you a little bit of overhang. We're going to use this to our advantage when making our exhibit. This is where the path is going to be on the raised section. On the right side of it, you're going to have our new exhibit, which we haven't started yet, and on the left side, you're going to have what we're currently building, which are the wolves. There's going to be a path that runs on the middle of this to obviously let guests walk on it, and we're going to have a smaller barrier to stop the guest from leaping into the wolf exhibit and having a lawsuit for our zoo. That would kill us. Luckily, the duplicate feature exists, and this process went really smoothly. Now all we have to do is smooth over the terrain modifications that we made and make it a little bit easier to put the path in. Pathing is probably the thing that I'm worst at in this game. It's an art form on its own, and has a really high learning curve, surprisingly. We're gonna try our best, though. And they're here! The exhibit turned out really nice, they have plenty of space. But obviously they don't like it too much yet. Let's just make sure they can get into their cave first, as we hopefully won't have to change that entire thing. And it looks like they can get in one of the entrances, but not the other. They almost can though. This should be a relatively easy fix, I'm thinking we'll just have to destroy one rock. That one's probably a little too big, and now the entire thing would cave in. This one looked a little bit easier, so hopefully the wolves will be able to get in now. Remember, all you have to do to refresh it is restart time and check again. And even if there's the thinnest blue line imaginable, the wolves can get in. And their babies will be fine too. Babies can go most places their parents can, and in some cases can even get into smaller areas, which could cause a problem. Let's not worry about that right now. The wolves just got in here, and they need their terrain to be a little bit better and have some enrichment in their exhibit. The Zoopedia says wolves need a lot of open space, but no water, no climbing, and obviously no deep dive areas. But, I always like to put a water source in my exhibit, because that takes some stress off the zookeepers from having to come and fill them so often. If you just have a little feeding trough or a drinking trough for them, the zookeepers are going to have to come up here every time they get thirsty. And I... yeah, that water is technically in the barrier, that's good. We're going to have to get a new water treatment area over here for our wolves, because nothing touches. We don't even have power, so we can't even have education yet. We're going to need to find a creative area for a staff zone in North America, but I'm not sure since all the exhibits are so tight. Like I was saying though, I always prefer to build a small pond, river, or lake in the exhibit instead of having a f drinking trough. That way, the animals can have water whenever they want and won't get dehydrated, since otherwise the zookeepers will have to get up here, which is pretty far away from the entrance of the zoo and all of their staff facilities. But if we just build this, the wolves can drink at their own leisure. In order to build a small pond, it's the easiest thing ever. You just use the terrain modification feature, hit pull, or push, I forget which one's going down, I think it's push, but then you just draw wherever you want your small little area to be and put calm water in it. 
You could put rough water, although I don't think they can drink that. I'm pretty sure it would hurt or scare the wolves away, since they're pretty sensitive animals. After that, make sure they can still traverse on it. But next, we're going to make their habitat a little bit more hilly and mountainous. Most of our habitats thus far have been pretty flat. I can't really think of one that has elevation in it besides our cappies, but not a whole lot of our animals like elevation. I looked at the terrain requirements for wolves and they need a lot of rock and a lot of soil, so that leads me to believe they live less in the grasslands and more in the mountain areas and forest where we're currently trying to mimic. This way, we'll have a big hill area. If you look at our grizzly bear exhibit, if we would have added an area like this with a bunch of hills and mountains and even some low ground, the guests wouldn't have been able to see them about half the time. But since we have this above ground viewing area for the wolves that's up the ramps, the guests will be able to see the wolves no matter where they go. This would be horrible if an animal is prone to getting stressed, but wolves luckily are not. You can also check that in the Zoopedia or the online wiki if you'd prefer that way. Both are just as good resources as each other. One of the hardest things to do in this game is make similar exhibits, like all of our North American ones, different from each other. So far, I think we're doing a good job of this. The grizzly bear is probably the most basic since our cougars have the climbing and our wolves have our terrain modification, but let's add some enrichment items that are a little bit different. I like these pronghorn pinatas. They actually act as food, and hopefully the wolves will go right over to them since they're close to the encounters. Secondly, let's add a heater into their den. This way, if it gets cold, it'll kind of force them to go in there, despite the temperature being fine for them now. Wolves are extremely playful animals. They came from our dogs, after all. Or rather, our dogs came from them. So if you have a dog, think about what it would like to play with if it was in a zoo exhibit. Think about how often your dog needs entertainment from balls, chew toys, or anything. Wolves will need that tenfold since they're bigger and have lower attention spans. In the wild, wolves occupy their free time by hunting and trying to survive, but in a zoo, that need is dealt with for the humans. The humans in the zoo provide all the wolves they need with their survival instincts, so the wolves are going to need entertainment in order to not get bored and stressed. Unless the enrichment is actively impeding the animal's space, like if you have a hundred beaver pools in the elephant exhibit and they wouldn't be able to walk, there's no such thing as too much enrichment. We have such a wide variety of animals in this zoo at this point, we have enrichment for pretty much every species we could possibly want. What I mean by that is let's say our grizzly bears needed this blood scent maker. If we already had it researched for them, despite us not having started researching our wolves yet, we have it unlocked for the wolves as well. Our elephants like the beaver pool, but we don't have beavers yet. So if we get beavers in this zoo, we can immediately have one of their favorite enrichment items already unlocked, despite us not having them in the zoo and the ability to research them yet. It's really convenient that enrichment items can cross over from animal to animal, and you don't have to research the same thing a hundred times. Otherwise, you'd need the sprinkler about 9,000 times in this game. The other thing about enrichment is try to spread it out. The animals are going to want to explore their entire enclosure, because it's all they got. So don't just put all their toys in one location. Timber wolves are by far the animal that we've made an exhibit so far with the largest range. If you look at where they're from, they're found in three continents, all over North America and Canada, all over Europe, and all over Asia. Despite their European population not being as much as the two, they can be found in a variety of different countries. Obviously, with this being the case, timber wolves are of least concern, nowhere near endangered, and are thriving in the wild. If you know anything about wolves, it's probably that they have an alpha of the pack. The wolf pack is pretty famous among fiction and pop culture, but you'd be surprised to learn that this actually isn't true. Alphas in packs just don't exist. If anything, they're led by the females. Female wolves typically spend their day taking after young pups, while males go out and do the hunting. This is why wolves typically are closer to their mothers, and females in general. Like most animals, at a certain age, male wolves are ousted from their packs and have to go start their own in their own families, while female wolves typically won't ever leave and will stay with the pack until the day they die, hopefully bringing more offspring to the cause. That's going to be it for the commentary in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
I'll catch you in the next one, but the gameplay is going to go on for another few minutes or so. If you want to see how the exhibit was decorated, feel free to watch. Have a good one. Kingpin out. See you in the next one real soon.